Eid Mubarak. Today we are here live and we want to continue from where we left off, talking on Christian marriage, what is the nature and why was it instituted. And with me in the studios to discuss this issue and to continue discussing this very important topic is Reverend Junisa from the Methodist Mission. Reverend Junisa, you're welcome to talk on Christianity. Uh, thank you, <coughs> Canon. And we wish that we will continue our program and be of use to our viewers. Thank you very much, viewers. As uh, Reverend Junisa said, we wish that we will be of use to you out there. Please make sure you have your Bibles handy because we'll be making a lot of references to Holy Scriptures to back our, our points this evening. And uh, like I said, the issue, the topic we want to talk about is Christian marriage. Christian marriage, what is it, what is the nature of nature and why was it instituted, you see, according to Holy Scriptures. And I am your presenter this evening, the Reverend Canon James Cole from the Anglican Mission. Please stay tuned and I'm sure you will be blessed. After uh, halfway through the program of discussion, we will open up, we'll short, take a short music break and open up the telephone lines for your comments, questions and contributions. Or better still, we will ask you to contact us on uh, um, our email address, which is uh, talkonchristianity at gmail.com. Talkonchristianity at gmail.com. But for now, we want to continue from where we left off. Last week, we looked at, um, uh, sorry, week before last, we looked at what is the nature and why was it instituted. We looked at divinely, it was divinely instituted by God, according to Genesis, the first book of the Holy Bible. And it was a covenant relationship between God and man. And why was it designed? We looked at the issue of it being lawful. Marriage is lawful and right. It is honorable for all. And today, we want to look at the issue of how should it be done? How should it be expressed? In everything that we do in life, there are ways and you know, patterns and principles mm. and you know, that are guiding things that we do. So now we'll add on to Reverend Junisa without wasting much time and uh, ask him to give us an insight or give us some, some brief explanation on how should marriage be expressed? How should it be done? Well, uh, just as we say, our reference book is the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going straight to the Bible, to Gen uh, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 6. In fact, I'll begin to read from verse 5. Matthew 19, 5. It says, And God said, For this reason, a man shall leave his mother, father and mother and unite with his wife, and the two will become one. So they are no longer two, but one. Man must not separate then what God has joined together. So Christian marriage is done by joining the two people together, joining the two people together. We often make a little fun out of Christian marriage. We say it's only in Christian marriage that you have one plus one making one. one. <laughs> <laughs> because arithmetically, one plus one <coughs> equal to two. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Christian marriage, one plus one, one equal yes. to one. According to the scripture, the man shall leave his father and mother mm. and cling to his wife. Mm -hmm. In other words, the two will hold on together. The two will unite as one. And when they become in marriage, when you've married them, when the priest has married you, you become one. You are no longer mm. uh, Fatu and the husband John. Or you're no longer Mary and the husband John. Mm -hmm. The two of you become one. And uh, unfortunately, this has been uh, abused by many people, mm -hmm. especially by women. Mm -hmm. They say to their husbands, afterwards, did you not hear in the Bible? Did you did not hear in church when the priest said, you should leave your father and mother and cling to me? Mm -hmm. Well, in the uh, African, African context, if the, f the husband leaves his father and mother completely and holds on to you, the wife alone, there'll be problems. Mm -hmm. And if the wife 
leaves the mother and f the mother and clings to his, the husband alone, there'll be problems also. Mm. Because the man came from a family and the wife also came from a family. Mm -hmm. But what the Bible is saying is that when the man and the woman become one, mm -hmm. then the families of that man will become the families of the woman. Yeah. The woman's family will also become the, husband, uh, the, 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 the man's family. family. Yeah. That is what is meant by uh, the man leaving his father and mother, clinging to his wife. Mm -hmm. When you hold together, what is mine becomes yours, mm -hmm. and what is yours becomes mine. Mm -hmm. So my family becomes your family, and your family becomes my family. Mm -hmm. So this mistake of people saying afterwards, the scripture says you should leave your father and mother. It does not work in, the, in, the, in, 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 a, in a Christian marriage. Mm -hmm. And it does not work in Africa. You cannot leave your father and mother and cling to your wife mm -hmm. alone, or you leave your mother and father and cling to your husband alone. Mm -hmm. You are married, yes, husband and wife, but you came from fathers and mothers, mm -hmm. so your fathers and mothers, your relatives should be the, or your partner's relative. Mm -hmm. So that's the meaning of the two shall be joined together. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to the scriptures, when the two are joined together, nobody should separate them yeah. because they are joined <coughs> by God. Mm -hmm. When we conduct a Christian marriage, God is there and we're calling God's presence, mm -hmm. we're calling upon God's blessings upon the marriage. Mm -hmm. So God is there blessing the marriage and people are there also blessing yes, yes. the marriage. Mm -hmm. Now when the marriage has been done, nobody has a right to separate them. Mm -hmm. You, the husband, must not do something that will bring a separation between you and your wife. Mm -hmm. Your wife must not do anything that should bring a separation between you. Your relatives also, mm -hmm. relatives and friends yes. also, yes. must not do anything that should bring separation between the husband and wife. Mm -hmm. That's what is meant by those whom God has joined, joined together, together, no man should, should put asunder. Mm -hmm. As long as God has joined them together, no man has the right to put them asunder. Mm -hmm. No man. Okay. Unfortunately, many mm -hmm. of the uh, cases where marriages break, mm -hmm. it's the third party that makes it break. The husband and wife can pull, mm -hmm. but when the relatives and friends begin to come in, when they begin to inject their own ideas into the husband or the wife, then trouble begins in the home. Yeah. And when the trouble begins, they sit back and they watch you, the husband and wife, go through your problems, and the problems cannot be solved, and finally you get separated. But let's, forget, let's not forget, the scriptures say, to you, the husband, to you, the wife, to you, the relatives, to you, the friends, what God has joined together, mm -hmm. no man should put asunder. Mm -hmm. Another scripture which tells us how marriage is done. I think before, before we go to the scripture, I want yeah. to just uh, chip in here. Yeah. That is why it is very important. I support all what you have said, in, of course, in line with the Bible and the scriptures, mm -hmm. the Holy Scriptures. But then that is why the, 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 <coughs> the, the, the church is always in support of pre-married counseling. That's it. Pre-married counseling. Yes. Nothing less than um, uh, three months. Yes. During this pre-married counseling, that is when we bring the two together mm -hmm. and take them through all these things that we are putting, we are talking about mm -hmm. uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Because some will go up to a certain point and say, ah, but I know be no. Yes. Yes. I know be no. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that this was how it should be. You see, so it is very important. Any two couple, any couple or two people that are planning to get married must insist that they go through a marriage counseling. Yes. Marriage counseling of nothing less than three months, which during which the priest or the catechist or the lay reader or whoever should be able to put them through. Like for example, we have um, uh, uh, a prayer book. We have brought in a prayer book this this, mm. this evening mm -hmm. to read out to our to, to our viewers out there to show them exactly what we are talking about. This is uh, an order of a Christian marriage that should take place in in, in church mm. in the in presence of God and man, as yeah. we normally say. Yeah. You see, the first part it says that we have come together in the presence.